ever feel like you're, you know, generating all this solar power, only to practically give it away for pennies. Welcome to Solar Scoop. Today, we're doing a deep dive into home battery sizing. We're really unpacking why getting a home battery is becoming so crucial, especially uh, with these net metering policies changing so fast all over the country. Mm -hmm. You know, the rules for how utilities actually credit you for your extra solar power. Yeah, that's exactly right. Utilities are um, really slashing those buyback rates. We're seeing rates as low as like two to four cents per kilowatt hour for the solar you send back. Mm -hmm. But then turn around and they charge you way more during peak times in the evening. Think uh, 12, maybe even 25 cents per kilowatt hour. Wow, it's a huge difference. It really is. And this isn't just about, you know, saving a few cents here and there. It's a major energy arbitrage opportunity. You're essentially buying energy from your own solar panels midday for almost nothing. Right. And then selling it back to yourself when prices are high. It's a huge financial win, potentially. Without storage, honestly, you're kind of running a charity for the utility company. Okay, so our mission today, really is to help you figure out how to calculate your exact battery needs, avoid those costly mortgages, you know, and take back some control over your energy. That's where this smart sizing really starts, isn't it? Absolutely. This uh, fundamental shift in how utilities work means a properly sized battery. It can save you a good chunk of change. We're talking maybe $150, sometimes up to $300 a month. And that's just by shifting that cheap solar power you generate at noon to when you need it most, like between 4 and 9 p.m. when rates spike. Okay, so how do you start figuring that out? Well, the first step is to kind of separate things out in your home. You've got your essential loads, think refrigerator, some lights, maybe medical equipment. Then there are comfort loads, like your air conditioning, and then convenience loads, TV, maybe the dishwasher, that kind of thing. Right, separating needs from wants. Exactly. The biggest trap people fall into is trying to back up everything. But, you know, real energy resilience, it starts with prioritizing what has to stay on during an outage. Smart sizing really focuses on your typical daily patterns, not just, you know, that one day you used absolutely everything at once. That makes sense. And that difference between essential and comfort loads, that must really shape how you size the battery. Mm -hmm. So, uh, given that, let's maybe walk through a few common goals people have. How yep. about we start with emergency backup? Okay, yeah. For just essential loads during, say, a power outage, you're generally looking at something like 10 to 20 kilowatt hours of battery storage. That should give you roughly mm, 12 to 24 hours of backup power for those critical things. Okay. We saw this with the Johnson family down in Florida. They had a 13.5 kilowatt hour Tesla power wall, and it got them through 18 hour outages, even during Hurricane Ian, because their solar panels could recharge it during the day. Right. The solar recharging is key there. It is. But you also have to ask, you know, most outages are much shorter. Do you really need to size for that once in a decade storm or focus on the more common shorter ones? That's a good point. Balancing cost versus that extreme event. Maybe a generator makes more sense for some people purely for those rare long outages. It can, yeah. It often comes down to cost and how often you expect those long outages. Okay, let's move on to the next goal. Solar optimization. Mm. This is more about the savings, right? Exactly. Yeah. This is all about maximizing your solar investment, storing that daytime energy specifically to use during those peak evening hours we talked about. For this, you're typically looking at a system size between uh, maybe 15 and 30 kilowatt hours. Mm -hmm. Take the Martinez family in California. They're saving about $280 a month. They have a 20 kilowatt hour battery. It means they avoid selling their extra solar for just four cents. Wow. And then buying it back later at 51 cents during peak times. 51 cents. Okay, that's huge. It is. The key here is sizing the battery to match your typical daily solar surplus, the extra energy you usually generate, not just your absolute best production day ever. Gotcha. So consistency over peak. Okay, and then the final scenario off-grid living. This sounds intense. Oh, it is. This demands, a, well, a serious system. You're usually looking at 30 to 80 kilowatt hours, maybe even more, depending on where you live and how much power you use. Right. The Thompsons, they live up in rural Montana. They use 60 kilowatt hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries. That LFP chemistry is known for being really long lasting and safe, which is great for off grid. But to charge that massive bank, especially in winter when they might get three or four days with very little sun, they need 12 kilowatts of solar panels. 12 kilowatts of solar just to charge the batteries reliably. Yeah, it's a big setup. And crucially for any battery system, really, but especially off grid, you need enough sun. Ideally, at least five good hours of peak sunlight per day on average to fully charge that battery bank. 
Okay, those are definitely some serious considerations for going off grid. Mm. We'll dig into how you can figure out the right size for your own home right after this. We'll be right back. Short pause. All right, we're back on Solar Scoop talking about home battery sizing. So we've talked about the goals, backup, optimization, off grid. Now, how does someone actually, you know, figure out the right size for their specific home? Okay, so there are a few key steps. First, you need to find your average daily energy use. Your utility bill is a starting point, but honestly, getting a whole home energy monitor for a couple of weeks gives you much better real world data. Okay, real data, not just the monthly average. Exactly. Second, really understand your utility's time of use rates, if they have them. This is vital for the financial side. Like in Arizona, there can be this uh, 44 cent per kilowatt hour difference. They call it an arbitrage opportunity. That's the potential savings by using your stored energy instead of grid power. 44 cents. Right. Right. Third, figure out your autonomy needs. How many days of backup do you really want? Maybe one to two days for typical backup. Just one day usually covers solar optimization needs. And for off-grid, you might need three, five, even seven days worth, depending on your climate. Mm -hmm. Fourth, always add a safety margin maybe 5 to 15% just for system inefficiencies and, you know, life. And the most important thing, I really want to stress this, always make sure your solar panel system can actually charge the battery size you're considering. Ah, uh, right. Don't get a huge battery if you only have a few panels. Precisely. A 20 kilowatt hour battery, for example, needs at least 4 kilowatts of solar array feeding at probably more in less sunny areas. That's super practical advice. Mm -hmm. It sounds like j just thinking bigger is always better isn't the right way to go here. Definitely not. It's like buying a, I don't know, a giant pickup truck when you only drive in the city. Impressive maybe, but not always practical or cost effective. So what are the biggest mistakes you see people making when they plan these systems? Oh, there are a few common pitfalls. Uh, one big one is oversizing for really rare events, like yeah. that 100-year storm. Yeah. Often a small backup generator is actually a cheaper way to handle those extreme rare outages. Okay, generator for the extremes. Yeah. Another mistake is ignoring those solar limits we just talked about. You simply can't fill a huge battery with a tiny solar array. Right. Forgetting about flat utility rates if your electricity costs the same all day, the savings from time shifting disappear, so the battery is mostly just for backup then. Makes sense. Also, uh, having too low an inverter output power, the inverter converts the battery's DC power to AC for your house. If its power rating is too low, even a fully charged massive battery can't run everything you need simultaneously, like your AC and microwave. Uh, the bottleneck. Exactly. Limited roof space for enough solar panels is another practical constraint. And finally, not planning for the future. Are you getting an EV soon? A heat pump. You might need more capacity down the road. Lots to consider there. But it seems clear that batteries, when sized right, yep. are really how you start to reclaim control from the utility. Right. Protect your energy future. Absolutely. End of the day, tailoring the system is key. While we've given you a framework, really optimizing it means uh, digging into your specific utility rates. Mm -hmm. Maybe monitoring your actual usage patterns for, say, two to four weeks. Calculating your real excess solar production. It's about designing a balanced system that fits your home. If you're feeling ready for that kind of tailored solution, the team over at Integrate Sun could be a good resource. They can actually research your specific rates, help monitor your usage, and design a system. Maybe consider giving them a call for a free consultation. Good tip. So as we wrap up, thinking about all this taking charge of your home's energy, mm. what stands out most to you? What's the most compelling part of this whole shift? 